In 2021, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first interchangeable biosimilar insulin product for diabetics at a lower cost, a generic option to the costly brand name of insulin. The lifestyle disorder diabetes affects nearly 10%, which is 537 million adults, individuals globally. This new product called Semgly Generic is designed to help improve glycemic control in adults and young patients with diabetes. It can serve as a substitute for the popular but pricey long-acting insulin, Lantus. The two are near similar in terms of their safety and effectiveness. The main difference lies here is in the price. The cost of a month's worth supply of Semgly is reportedly $170 without insurance. For Lantus, it's closer to around $450. If the doctor approves a patient to make the switch, nearly hundreds of dollars a month can be saved. Generics have not only hit the target of diabetes, but also a number of other serious disease conditions. The world is a vast region with a dense population of 7.9 billion humans. It is natural that a population of this magnitude will suffer from various ailments and hence the usage and expenditure on drugs are a part of every household. A vast majority of population, up to 75% faces lifestyle diseases which requires medicines to be taken regularly. People could no longer afford to take their daily medicines during circumstances of economic crisis and thus there have been cases where skipping of dose was fatal in disorders like diabetes, hypertension and heart diseases and thus generic sector evolved as a crowning stroke. The naming of a cat is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think it first. I am as mad as a hater when I tell you a cat must have three different names. T.S. Eliot, The Naming of Cats, 1939. What T.S. Eliot wrote way back in 1939 is also applicable to naming of medicines. A medicine must have three different names. First is the chemical name. A long, complex and not easy to pronounce. The second one is a generic name. Needed to avoid the jargon of the complex chemical name. And third one being a trade name assigned to it by the company which manufactures and market it. The trade name came into existence first, that is before the generic name. Aspirin is one of the first synthetic drugs which were successfully marketed by Bayer. Its chemical name was acetyl salicylic acid and aspirin was a trademark given to that drug by Bayer. Bayer also had the patent of aspirin. Upon expiry of the patent, other companies started selling the same painkiller medicine under the name of aspirin. Bayer retaliated by referring to its aspirin as the genuine aspirin. 
subsequently after a court case in USA in 1921, which Bale lost. Aspirin was a generic name used to refer to acetyl salicylic acid. So what is a generic drug? A pharmaceutical product like aspirin by other pharma companies usually intended to be interchangeable with the originator brand product aspirin by Bayer manufactured without a license from the originator manufacturer and marketed after the expiry of patent or other exclusivity rights. The cost of discovery and marketing of any new drug is very high. Because of the cost factor, most of the drug discovery research in US and in Europe shifted from academic institutions to pharma companies. In view of the very high expenditure on discovery of new drugs, the companies use different ways to retain exclusive selling rights for newly introduced drugs so as to recover huge cost of discovery and to increase their profit margin. This situation resulted in increasing the prescription cost to a very great extent. Companies marketing the generic version of these drugs on the other hand incur much less expenditure, face a tough competition after expiry of exclusivity rights, resulting in cost of the generic drugs being much less. However, a complex procedure was associated with approvals of generic products by US FDA. The Hatch-Waxman Act introduced in USA in 1984 attempted to simplify the complex procedure of approval of generic drugs. It resulted in rapid approval of generic drugs and increase in the use of generic drugs, thereby reducing the cost of the prescription. The Indian scenario is different. In India, indigenous discovery research was not very significant till about 2005. This was also coupled with the fact that Indian population represents one of the highest out-of-pocket expenditures on medicines in absence of popularity of health insurance and conducive laws. The Indian government in 1970 introduced process patent which enabled the Indian pharma companies to reverse engineer the blockbuster molecules. This led to both cost cutting of medicines available for Indian population as well as rapid growth of Indian pharma industry to the extent that India is a major generic supplier of the world presently. Introduction of Anti-HIV Medicine at a very low cost by Sipla is a feather in the cap of the Indian generic pharma industry. It has also saved lives of millions of African people to whom affordable healthcare for HIV infection was not available. In spite of having significant advantages, the list of myths regarding generics is huge. A very common one being that generic drugs are less potent and less safe than branded ones. But the truth is that generics are equally potent and safe as the branded ones. Some drugs with poor absorption and permeability properties can be a point of concern. But such drugs are under extensive research to make them available with excellent efficacy at an affordable price. Another fallacy is that generic drugs are inferior in quality and hence cheaper but the real story is that generics are cheaper as the cost involved in preclinical and clinical studies is waived off. A common thinking amongst many of us is that FDA regulations for generics are less stringent than for branded ones but FDA actually has rigorous regulations for the approval of both branded and generic drugs. Generics are not considered equivalent to branded but practically they differ only with respect to the excipients and the API that is the active pharmaceutical ingredient being the same. It is a common perception that generics have more side effects than branded but practically they both have similar side effects. 
another misconception is that Genrex are manufactured in poor quality facilities. But yet again, Genrex are manufactured at facilities that meet the required standards. Let's demonstrate this by having a look over the most remarkable and revolutionary story in the history of medicine. AIDS continues to be a huge challenge before scientists all over the globe due to unavailability of any perfect cure for the disease. Where on one side, AIDS drugs hit heavily onto the pockets of a patient, costing around $30 per day. The generic drug combination developed by the Cipla Limited chairman, Mr. Yusuf Hamid, was available to patients only at $1 per day. This generic drug truly turned out to be a savior to the AIDS patient. This generic combination was a hope of light in darkness of the life of AIDS patient. Cipla is one of the major players in Indian generic market and this is one of its major contribution. The drug combination for AIDS by Cipla is not the sole example for the price gap between generic and branded. A number of other essential drugs also serve as an epitome of this fact. So, let's have a look over the price comparison chart for a handful of drugs we encounter in our routine ailments. Diclofenac, a painkiller which is often a part of household costs. Its branded counterpart cost around Rs 51.91 whereas the generic counterpart cost around Rs 3.35. Meropenem, which is a famous antibacterial, the branded one cost around Rs 2,383 and the generic one cost around Rs 120, which is a vast difference. Another example being acetylcysteine tablets, which are used for respiratory disorders, the branded tablet cost around Rs 333 and the generic one cost around Rs 120. Similarly, there are various other medicines used for disorders like diabetes, hypertension, liver dysfunction, etc. which are available at affordable rates. The next question which occurs is if the price is low, does the drug manufacturing company follow proper protocol for safety and efficacy. Catherine Ibn's book, The Bottle of Flies, reveals how a growing market for cheaper drugs creates a dangerous gap between regulatory requirements and failure of corporate on the part of ethics. She documents how the FDA struggled to address those safety gaps and challenges that still exist. The majority of the book focuses on Rand Baxi an Indian business that was the first overseas manufacturer to offer generic medicine in the United States and is now one of the world's top generic drug providers. Ranbaxi US Division, Ranbaxi USA, pleaded guilty in 2013 to several counts of selling adulterated medications and lying to the FDA about it and paid a fine of $500 million. Thus, Due to some earlier controversies and scandals, FDA has become more vigilant by adding certain amendments, thus circumscribing the voids so that the companies work transparently on the legitimate line of laws. Generic market in India is huge. Thus, in order to cope up with ever-increasing demand of generic medicines, in 2008, the government of India through the Department of Pharmaceuticals, started a new initiative, Jan Aushadi, a Hindi word literally translated as medicine for people. Now renamed as the Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana, which is also known as PM BJP, campaign with over 8,500 Jan Aushadi stores as of January 2019 to ensure availability of low-cost generic medicines. The main objective of this campaign is to popularize generic medicines among the masses by making the quality medicines, consumables and surgical items available at affordable price for all and reduce out-of-pocket expenditure of consumers 
patience and also dispel the prevalent notion that low price generic medicines are of inferior quality or are less effective also to generate employment by engaging individual and entrepreneurs in the opening of pm bjp kendras it planned to set up warehouses to serve as regional hubs to these stores to boost supplies technological efforts were also being made to connect the stores with warehouses and update stock situation on a real time basis for maintaining and educate supply there are multiple regional warehouse setups all over the country each store is being connected via software system to track the real time position of medicines so that there is no paucity of two drugs at any location the government has also started procuring drugs from private parties in addition to central government public sector undertakings psus in order to avoid delay in supply government along with fda is taking huge leaps to ensure that system works perfectly well the pm bjp also provides various incentives to the people for opening of a jan aushadi kendra the pm bjp blood basket includes over 1451 medicines and 240 surgical instruments and consumables recently ayurvedic products are also added the medicines listed in the product list of pm bjp are procured only from world health organization goods manufacturing practices food safety and standards authorities of india and ce certified suppliers as applicable for ensuring the quality of the products two tier quality assurance by procuring medicines only from who gmp certified companies and testing through laboratories accredited by napl which is national accreditation board for testing and calibration laboratories since august 2021 additional tests like hardness test for coated and uncoated tablets and leak test have been added in the tenders as a mandatory condition stability test is also made compulsory for vendors supplying to pmbi 16 nabl accredited labs are empaneled with pmbi medicines are stored and transported as per who guidelines thus this program and this age to making unbranded quality medicines available to the population in the country at a reasonable and affordable price through retail outlets set up with the help of the government with proper trustable quality assurance procedures thus india has the highest per capita market for generic drugs it contributed nearly 70% of the total market revenue for indian pharmaceutical industry as of 2020 with sanofi has generated a sale of 1.13 billion dollars from its generic segment glenmark generated a sale of 1.49 billion dollars whereas sipla generated revenue of 2.61 billion dollars from its generic segment and sun pharma generated a revenue of around 4.52 billion dollars from its generic segment on similar terms generic prescription drugs generated a revenue of around 79 billion us dollars worldwide in fiscal year 2019 and this was expected to go up to 100 million dollars by 2026 generic medicines in india have received a new impetus with prime minister modi himself advocating the usage of these medicines as per the latest national sample survey office survey on healthcare in 2014 medicines emerged as a principal component of total health expenses 72% in rural areas and 68% in urban areas for a country with one of the highest per capita out of pocket expenditures on health even a modest drop in drug prices will free hundreds of households 
The pharmaceutical industry in India is currently valued at $41.7 billion and is expected to reach $65 billion by 2024 and $120 billion by 2030. Generic drugs with 70% of market share make the largest segment of the pharmaceutical industry in India. The major investors are Reddy's Laboratories, Glenmark Pharmaceuticals, Cipla Limited, GlaxoSmithKline and Lupin Limited. Beyond a shadow of doubt, medications are one of the basic necessity of populace around the globe and the need of quality healthcare for the society irrespective of the demarcations of boundaries. The generics may be the key to the predicament that we are facing, bringing us one step closer to achieving our goal. There arises a need for harmonized global regulation of generics for growth of pharmaceutical sector, thereby increasing the confidence of general masses in generics. The end goal hasn't changed, the availability and accessibility of quality healthcare for patients with the essential infrastructure generic proves to be a boon for us. It offers not only affordable but also medicament of the same efficacy and pharmaceutical kinetics of that as its branded counterpart. The generics may differ from branded medicines with respect to excipients, although the variability is strictly regulated by FDA. The FDA generic drug programs conducts rigorous review to ensure the generic drugs meet safety standards. Various efforts are being taken by policy makers around the globe to ensure that generics get its due recognition all over the world. Jan Aushadi Kendras playing a major role in India. The transparency in manufacturing of generic medicines leads to increase in trust among customers and increased patients' compliance. Despite the efforts taken and incentives handed out for increasing the popularity of generics, the path is a difficult one to tread on. By making people aware through awareness programs, publicity and also pointing brand ambassadors to promote generic drugs can be fostered among the masses. Thus, generics is the future of healthcare.